As a social skills coach, I've worked with a lot of shy introverts in the past. From what I've noticed, most of them prefer having one-on-one -on -one interactions. That's why they find it hard to socialize in larger settings. Because they don't know how to participate in group conversations, they just keep to themselves and don't say anything. If you can relate to that, I wanna share with you the exact same advice that I give to our clients in our social skills training program. They've seen great results with it, so make sure you stick around until the very end. My name is Mike McPinlock. I help STEM professionals improve their social confidence. If you're new to the channel, remember to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when I post a new video every single week. The reality is, you can't really avoid having group conversations. In order to build social confidence, you have to know how to interact with people in a variety of social situations. If not, you'll miss out on a lot of opportunities to have more meaningful connections. Once you figure out how to engage in group conversations, you'll feel a lot more confident putting yourself out there. You'll enjoy going to networking events, hanging out with your friends, or even just having lunch with your coworkers. That being said, here are 12 actionable tips that you can implement right away. All right, let's get into it. Tip number one is to prepare ahead of time. I know making small talk for introverts can be challenging. If that sounds like you, going to a social gathering can feel intimidating, especially if you don't know anyone there. If you're wondering how to be more talkative in a group, make sure you prepare ahead of time. I recommend you do your research and anticipate what most people might be talking about. What you'll want to do is to gather some information about the event that you're planning on attending. For example, if you're going to a conference, look up the speakers. If you're heading to a house party, try to learn more about the organizer. I would also encourage you to get familiar with trending topics. Before you head out, visit some reputable news websites and check out a few social media accounts. That way, you can stay up to date with current events. If you're wondering how to never run out of things to say, come up with as many potential topics that you can discuss with others. By doing so, it'll be a lot easier for you to contribute to group conversations. Tip number two is to imagine things going well. From what I've seen, those who struggle socially have a hard time controlling what they think. They tend to replay past mistakes in their heads repeatedly, which lowers their self-confidence. Remember, your mind and body are interconnected. When you change one, the other follows. That being said, instead of ruminating about things not going well, why not imagine the best case scenario? If you're wondering how to master group conversations, you have to stop doubting yourself. Make an effort to remember as many positive social interactions that you've had in the past. You want to prove to yourself that you're capable of building rapport with others. The more you do this, the more self-assured you'll come across. In fact, recalling previous successes is one of the best confidence building exercises that I know. When you expect good things to happen, then you'll behave as if it will. Tip number three is to look for open groups. If you want to increase the probability of having a great interaction, look for a group that seems inviting. If you're not sure what I mean, I want you to imagine a bunch of individuals who are chatting. Their body language is partially angled outwards and facing everybody else. On the other hand, a group that doesn't want to be bothered will typically all be facing each other with very little gaps in between them. When you're just starting out, avoid walking up to those people for now. Once you find an open group, follow the three second rule and make a move right away. The longer you wait, the more approach anxiety you'll feel and you'll talk yourself out of taking action. You'll be left standing by yourself and you'll have a terrible time at any event. Tip number four is to position yourself well. It's easy to be left out in group conversations if you're not visible. In order for people to see you, put yourself in a position where you can face everybody else. That way, you already look like you're part of the interaction. If you're not sure what to say to join a group, always start with a compliment. Tell them that you find them interesting and ask if it's okay to hang out with them. Remember to smile and make eye contact to acknowledge everyone. Shake their hands to politely introduce yourself. By doing so, you'll give off a great first impression and come across as someone friendly. Tip number five is to be observant. Now that you're in the group, how do you participate? Before you say anything, make sure you pay attention to what everybody else is talking about. Be observant at first, especially when you're around people that you don't know. Get familiar with a group that you just joined so you can identify what topics are being discussed. The more you do, the easier it'll be for you to come up with something that interests them. For now, make sure you actively listen by making small remarks to acknowledge what the other person is saying. That way, you'll look like you're engaged because you're still participating. Tip number six is to not hesitate so much. A mistake that I see a lot of shy introverts commit in group conversations is that they wait too long to say something. Even though they know they have something valuable to contribute, they never speak up because they're looking for the perfect opening. As a result, they never give themselves a chance to share their thoughts. And then, they're mad at themselves for being so quiet once again. If this sounds like you, you have to stop hesitating so much. If you think about it, group conversations tend to be lively and chaotic for the most part anyway. That being said, you have to get comfortable politely interrupting others every now and then. What you'll want to do is to use your body language to gesture that you want to say something, and then speak up as soon as the opportunity presents itself. 
in the event that you do offend someone for cutting in, make sure you offer them a sincere apology right away. Just don't make a big deal out of it and move on. On the other hand, if you do get interrupted while you're saying something, be assertive, but still be respectful. Let them know that you'd like to finish your story if that's okay with them. Doing this definitely requires some practice, so give yourself a break when you make a mistake. Tip number seven is to share something relevant. Most interactions typically stall when someone says something that the other person can't relate to. If you wanna know how to master group conversations, Make sure whatever you're going to say adds value to what's being discussed. This shows everybody else that you're paying attention and that you're socially intelligent. Also, keep the conversation light and fun. That's why it's important that you learn how to be funny and have good comebacks. When you know how to make people laugh, you'll be able to lighten up the mood and make others feel good when they're around you. That's why whatever you do, avoid talking about sensitive topics like religion, politics, and race. Keep in mind that getting into an argument can turn any interaction awkward real fast. Tip number eight is to tell good stories. If you wanna know how to improve your conversation skills, stop being so logical all the time. From what I've noticed, most people who have awkward silences during their interactions tend to be very concise when they speak. They give short responses and don't include enough details when they share something. To fix this issue, make sure your story is structured well by having a beginning, middle, and end. You'll wanna build it up, use descriptive words, and release attention when you make your point. As mentioned before, really take the time to prepare what you wanna talk about in advance. The more you do, the more confident you'll be when you contribute to group conversations. Tip number nine is to work on your delivery. If people can't hear you, you won't be able to hold their attention. That's why you have to get comfortable speaking louder. If you're soft-spoken, imagine the person you're talking to is a bit further behind from where they're situated. Also, in order to captivate the group, make sure you raise your energy slightly when you're speaking. Use your hands to accentuate what you're saying and vary your tonality as well. Doing so will improve your delivery and make you look like a great storyteller. Tip number 10 is to get out of your head. A lot of people who are shy and introverted tend to overanalyze everything. They usually freeze up in social situations because they're so worried about how they're coming across. That's why they often feel anxious and they can't come up with interesting things to talk about. If that sounds like you, remember to give the person who's talking your full and undivided attention. Like I said earlier, be an active listener to prevent yourself from zoning out. When someone is speaking, try to lean forward and not occasionally to show interest. By being in a moment, you'll appear more confident and charismatic to others. Tip number 11 is to have an open body language. Let me ask you a question. Would you wanna to talk to someone with their arms crossed and has a frown on their face? I didn't think so. If you wanna master group conversations, you have to pay attention to your nonverbal communication as well. Remember, it's not just what you say, but how you say it matters too. As mentioned before, make sure you smile and maintain proper eye contact if you wanna project friendliness. Stand or sit up straight and avoid crossing your arms or legs. When you do those things, you'll look open and personable during your interactions. As a result, more people will be inclined to engage with you. Tip number 12 is to practice in smaller settings. From what I've seen, most individuals who struggle with group conversations get discouraged really easily. They don't handle rejection well and give up way too soon. If this sounds like you, you have to get good at managing your expectations. Learning how to be more talkative in a group will take time, so you have to be patient with yourself. My advice is to have conversations regularly throughout your day and practice in smaller settings. Doing so will give you lots of positive reference experiences over time. You'll realize that talking to strangers isn't so bad and that people actually want to hear what you have to say. If you keep showing up and doing the work, eventually you'll get good at group conversations. You'll look forward to going to any social gathering and be able to make the most out of them as well. If you're shy and technically skilled and you want to know how to approach and talk to anybody, remember to download your free socializing cheat sheet. The link is in the description below. If you're tired of struggling socially and you wanna learn more about our social skills training program, book your free consultation today and let's connect. The link is in the description below as well. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button, subscribe and share it with someone who you know who could benefit from it. And now, let's turn it to you. Which one of these steps are you going to implement first? Are you going to work on imagining things going well or on telling good stories? Leave me a comment below and let me know. All right, that's it for me for now and I'll see you in the next video.